tough 21 to 7 loss. Uh, give us about 30 seconds on what you tried to do offensively against Augie and what they allowed you to do. Well, you know, we, we felt that we uh, had to establish a running game and a short passing game from it. And uh, you know, we had glimpses of running the ball at, at times, and, and I thought we started out throwing the ball uh, fairly well in our short patterns. But uh, obviously, we got into some situations through penalties and, and some losses uh, uh, that we had to maybe try to throw the ball a little bit more than. Uh, than we wanted to and, and just didn't uh, ever really establish a, a good solid running attack. At least one of their scores was scored on the offense, not your defense. Defensively, did you do about what you wanted? Right. I, I thought our kids gave a good effort the whole game, battled. Uh, we felt we had to shut down San Augustine, their running back. I think he got like 48 yards on 16 carries. Uh, first half, I, I don't think he really wanted to carry the ball, but their quarterback came up with some big plays for him, uh, scrambling, and they hit a couple long passes uh, from it. Uh, again, they came up with plays that they needed during the game. Well, we talked about the game, and uh, let's take a look now at the highlights of the first half of the Augustana UNO game this past Saturday night in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It was a beautiful uh, evening up there. Good night for football, game. huh? Yeah, it was. It was a shrine game for them. Uh, not much wind, which is uh, uh, very uncommon up there in uh, Sioux Falls. Uh, the field was, uh, I thought, in fairly good shape. I've seen it years where there was uh, no grass between those hash marks. They didn't paint the sand green this year. Well, this year was just uh, sort of some <laughs> dead sod out there. Okay, the kickoff goes to uh, Victor Barnes. Victor Barnes. Excuse me, I guess that's Aaron Vactor. They had uh, Barnes down here. Well, Victor right. Vactor's close. Right. He takes it out to the 20. And uh, that drive goes nowhere, and we'll pick it up with Augustana's ball. Right. This, you know, their quarterback, uh, again, uh, he's done this in, in every game. Uh, they had a third and nine. He comes out, and he gets about 10 yards and, and a first down on it. Uh, just, uh, you know, good competitor. You can see that he was uh, probably a good Division I uh, prospect. This is San Augustine, uh, averaging about 130 yards a game. And, and uh, again, our kids uh, got after him. And, uh, again, I think there was a point where I'm not sure he really wanted to carry the ball the first half. That's Dan Sellen making a real nice play there on the option. Two real nice plays. We'll go back to UNO's ball now. Paul Check's going to throw. Right, and you know, we felt that we had to, you know, run some patterns and, and throw the ball quick and, and hopefully give Paul some uh, confidence on it. This is our 90 patterns, and they were playing off our corners most of the day, and uh, Chris Crutchfield makes a nice catch here of 11 yards. Ball's up at the 30-yard line. Next play is going to have LaRon Henderson carrying the ball. Right, we ran a sweep. Uh, there and that, you know, blocked real well at the point of attack and uh, got a nice 70 yard gain out of it. Balls at the 37 and uh, this is going to be the first big break in the ball game and it's going to be a tough one for you. Know, for we, we come back with a uh, 90s pattern again and obviously we want to throw to our wideouts most of the time and uh, Paul uh, decided he's going to throw the tight end over through him they get an interception for a touchdown. Uh, you know, not exactly uh, what you're looking out of your uh, a quick passing game, and, and again, not a, not a real good read, and uh, it's not the things that, uh, that we need from a confidence standpoint or at the start of the game. Boy, it just things, seems like things snowball when you're, uh, when you're in that kind of a situation, the wrong read, the wrong right. pass, and, and it's seven points. Okay. There's a nice pass over Right, we'll come right back to it. And again, I, I was happy with our kids. Again, the effort was uh, good. We hit Leron Henderson out of the backfield here for 31 yards. Uh, we, we start to move uh, uh, on this, and we come up with a, a couple incompleted passes here and, and a loss of one. We end up punting the ball away to him. Uh, St. Augustine carrying here a little counter play again and uh, uh, tackle on the sideline there by Mark Mattingly and Dan Sellen uh, for a gain of one yard. They come back on the next play, and they, they throw deep. Uh, we didn't uh, cover very well there, but uh, he didn't hit him, so you have another incompletion. Uh, we got a pretty good too. heat on him there with Rich Luter, and uh, he just throws the ball downfield incomplete. So, you know, after uh, something bad happens, I think we came back with a fairly good offensive series, and our defense has, has really stuck in there. A uh, check comes up and hits uh, Chris Crutchfield again with a nice pass of seven yards on the sideline. Uh, Another we, nice run by Laron here. We run a counter sweep there, and that's Alex McCoy out front there, and, and Laron takes it down to the one yard line and gained 39 yards. Boy, it looked like he made it in. Yeah, but I'll tell you, those officials are right on top of him. I'm sure he did. Anyway, the ball's at the one yard line. Give it to Laron again. Right. He takes it in and. Uh, we run a power play here, and he scores from one yard out. Uh, the extra point is good by uh, Tony Marino, and you know, we're right back at 7 7. 7 7, and. Uh, this is where you want to be, right back at the beginning of the ball game again, and you've taken care of the first quarter of play. All tied up. Uh, we're going to have one more play here before the quarter ends. Right. You know, here we are. We come back, tie it up, and, 
And on their first play uh, from scrimmage, they drop back, and, and he just he, he scrambles a little bit out of the pocket here, sets up. Uh, our defender had slipped, got back up, thought he had a chance to uh, intercept it. Their uh, receiver makes a nice play coming back, and good concentration. They, they come up with a big play. He had him double covered back there, too. Well, you know, we have an opportunity, I think, for an interception uh, at that time. We end up with uh, a 25-yard gain uh, uh, by Augustana. And, you know, those, those are the kind of things uh, that we've got to start uh, preventing. Uh, he comes back again. Uh, uh, we get a nice uh, uh, loss of uh, nine yards right here on this. Uh, he tried to run a little action pass. Uh, Darren Curtis, uh, nose guard, playing extremely well for us right now. And we come up with a big play here. Kerry Newman blocks a uh, field goal attempt. And, you know, so I, I guess, you know, to me, we're, we're playing uh, right with a, a very good Augustana football team, uh, one that's, uh, you know, been in the playoffs and, and a very good, solid team. Deion Martin takes a handoff right now uh, from Czech, and uh, he has a, a nice run here of, of 35 yards, takes it down to their 32-yard line. And, you know, this kind of runs that we're looking for, for from uh, uh, Deion on, on these. But right away. Yeah, another big play. Now, we're in their side. Our, our people that understand, they're going to start coming out. Us. And uh, we have a missed assignment uh, as far as pass protection. We get a loss of 10 yards right now. So now you're sitting at, at second and 20. Uh, you know, this is the kind of situations we got to stay out of. We're, we're a little inexperienced at, at some spots uh, there, and we ended up having to punt. Those are the plays that, you know, first and 10, first and 20, second and 20, those are incredibly tough right. to come back from. Here's our quarterback again. Uh, we have good coverage downfield, lose contained just a little bit. Uh, it's uh, Corey Barther on the sideline putting a good hit on. He gained seven yards. Uh, for it. They got a first down right here. Uh, they popped through for a 15-yard gain uh, with That's Wenzel. Wenzel. Right. Uh, you know, we made him go a little bit more to their fullback. We took the, the good running back a little bit out of the game for him. They had a big uh, third and nine right here. They had just a little quick pass uh, uh, to St. Augustine for a first down. Uh, this was a 16-play drive. Uh, now, right here again, we, they come out run the option. We got people around him. Uh, we just bounce him. Uh, uh, he, he makes a big play out of that type of a situation. 19 yards. Uh, down to the two-yard line. Call that arm tackling? Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, we bounce them around on the grass. Uh, you have people slipping a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you got to make plays like you gotta. that. you got to. And they score. San Augustine goes in again, and right. it's 14-7, Augie. You know, you also got to look at two ways. You know, we got to tackle, but uh, this, this quarterback uh, comes up and makes those kind of plays. Yeah. So, uh, those, are, those are what people have to start doing. We, we have to make plays on our side just like that. If you hear this on the radio, like everybody, I'm sure, listened to the ball game on the radio, and it's tough to, to visualize some of those plays. Here's Victor Barnes uh, again with a nice 28-yard uh, return on, on the kickoff then. Uh, we come right out, and, uh, you know, I, I think we're, uh, we're moving the ball. Here's Roy Napora up inside for a gain of three. And Paul Check is going to throw an incompletion right here. And again, th these are the ones that are discouraged. I think we run a nice pattern right here. Uh, we're open. We need a first down. Uh, uh, we just don't throw the ball real well uh, out there. No, those are the kind of things that, that we've got to start doing. And halftime sees a 14-7 deficit for you and Augustana on top. At this point, I mean, there was no panic, I'm sure, on, on your part. Uh, what did you tell the kids in the locker room? We know, we've got to execute and, uh, you know, it, it's throw and catch, it, it's block at the point of attack, do the things on the back side, uh, you know, defensively keep the intensity up. Uh, you know, I felt that we had, uh, you know, they, they put the one drive in there. We, we uh, uh, I shouldn't say let them, but, you know, we had chances to make some plays on that, but uh, we're playing a good team. You and, take uh, you know, they're going to have some drives once in a while. That, that happens. Uh, it's 14-7. We gave them one real cheap one. I was going to say, you take away the turnover, and it's 7-7. Seven, seven. You played them even the first half. Right. And, uh, you know, what our kids right now is confidence-wise, they got to understand that, that right now they're playing with a very good football team. Let's yeah. pick up the second half highlights now. It's 14-7, Augustana on top of UNO. I tell you, we come out second half, and, and we have a, a very short uh, kickoff, and uh, uh, they, they start with the ball on the 40-yard line, someplace that you don't need uh, somebody to start with. Again, we, uh, we kicked off very poorly uh, the other night in the game, and uh, you know these are little things that we have to understand that we have to take care of. They come right out, and on second, second down here, uh, second and 20, they throw deep, 
and uh, it, it's a beautifully thrown ball. Perfect pass, I'm yeah. not so sure the coverage is all that bad no. uh, on that type of thing. But again, that's what uh, good teams do to you uh, from that. He again, he comes back, he scrambles uh, on this and uh, makes a gain of four yards uh, to the outside. They have a second and, uh, excuse me, next one here is a third and three. Uh, down the goal line, they throw a pass right here to San Augustine uh, uh, for the touchdown. And he takes it in. Uh, but again, you know, coming right out that second half, uh, they you know they make a nice uh, long play. They get themselves in position, and, and now we're down 21-7. Uh, the problem with that is that teams now can can sit on it uh, and, and uh, you know make it very difficult to get the ball back unless we can uh, do some things offensively that are, are going to force them to to open up. We come right back here again, and, and Paul makes a real nice throw to uh, Scott Burrish right here, uh, 41 yards. And, you know, we're moving again downfield. Uh, you know, our kids aren't hanging it up. Uh, we had you know, some not too good things happen to us uh, right then and we get uh, Roy Napora up the middle for nine yards. Uh, we got a nice drive uh, uh, going again. Uh, from it, we come up in this series with, with a loss and uh, then an incompleted pass, and uh, we threw an interception. It was in the end zone. Uh, I'm not sure, sure the interception was all that that bad a deal. This is Mark Priest. Uh, they went deep again on that side, uh, and Mark Priest made a real nice. Uh, he made play. the play on that one. Yeah, it's tough for those defensive backs to figure out where the ball is on those long passes. Right, it, it's tough, and you know, right here uh, again, they, they put their ears back and come after us, and we have a loss of 12, and we end up punting again uh, in this situation. Here's more good, more good pass defense. And again, you know, we're keeping him in there, but look, look, the guy, the guy buys some time and, and doesn't take the sack, and, and he gets the ball out of bounds. I, I think these are some uh, qualities that, that help Augie. They're not flashy uh, on that, but they they don't hurt themselves. This is Eric Hill on on a trap again up inside for seven yards. Uh, again, I think our backs are running hard, and and the. The people are blocking well. Uh, we just got to be a little more consistent. Those kinds of things you do to win ball games don't show up in the stats. Those little out of bounds pass. They just show up as an incompletion, right. but it wasn't a sack and it wasn't an it's interception. It's not a dead play. Yeah. I start out in the fourth quarter here, and San Augustine gets a, a gain of 11 yards, and you know now they they they, they want to start hammering the ball and take some time off the off the clock. And I think we even got a, a face mask penalty uh, on that. But they they throw to San Augustine, and this is Dan Sellen again for a loss of of one yard. On that, uh, is he a senior, San Augusto? Yes, he is. Good. <laughs> and then Bobinski, a pi another pass incomplete here. Good pressure. But you know, there's an example right there. We blitzed him. He rolls into the blitz. He sees it. He's got the, uh, you know, the athletic ability right there to, to buy a little time. Throws an incompleted pass, and, and they just have to, you know, punt the ball. We come out here on a bootleg, and uh, they're all conference in. Dante Dean makes a, a play on Paul Check, knocks the ball down uh, right there. Come back with Augie again right now, and we got good heat on on the passer and good coverage out here uh, again by Dan Sellen uh, for an incompleted pass. And then another turnover is going to just about seal your fate here. Okay, on this particular play, I think uh, uh, Jim Brzezinski's in right now. We ran a trap uh, pass and uh, it bounced off, but there was interference on, on our receiver on that one. So we, we get the ball back uh, uh, on that. And we come out here and Jim throws a little 90 pattern here to, to William Thomas. Uh, William makes a nice catch, a nice play. And, and again, we have a 48-yard gain uh, plus a face mask uh, uh, penalty on that. And, you know, we, we still feel at this time we, we can go down there and score. We run a trap play to run the portal right there for five yards. Uh, you know, again, I guess what I'm saying, I, I think our kids are playing hard right now. We, we do some things to hurt us. A quick pass to Victor Barnes gets a first down. Uh, you know, we're moving the ball down in there uh, from it. We come up with a play with no gain, and then uh, they come after us, and, and they get a sack of seven yards. Uh, well, like you said, they're putting their ears back, knowing you we're going to have to pass yeah. sooner or later. Uh, you know, we, we're now we're at a third and 17 uh, type of situation. Uh, third down, we threw an incomplete. Now we uh, we get another sack here on, on fourth down. And you know, this is the, we got to stay out of these situations. Uh, we're, we're having too many zero plays right now, or, or dead plays, I guess, from an offensive standpoint that, that hurt us. And uh, this is our last play offensively. Uh, you know, obviously we got to throw the ball now uh, downfield, and uh, we throw an interception. Uh, Brzezinski does have a good hit here, <laughs> and then uh, if you notice on the side, uh, you know, I, I think the, the officials in this league uh, have got to do a better job now of uh, controlling what happens after some of these. Oh yeah. Final score 21-7, Augustana victorious, and as we look at the final stats, it was pretty doggone even. You take away that uh, 
Take away the three interceptions, one of them for a touchdown, and uh, UNO plays Augustana pretty doggone even. Right, you know, and, and I guess, uh, you know, you give a score up right before half, uh, it's not always a, a good situation. They put a nice drive uh, together at that time. Then they came right out and scored right away in the third quarter. And that, that puts the pressure, uh, you know, on us to, to get some things uh, done. I think when, they're, when you're up by two touchdowns, you can start freewheeling a little bit. But again, you know, total yards, uh, uh, if you're winning, you don't have to look at the statistics, I guess. Time of possession, again, Augie had, had the ball for five minutes uh, more than we did. Uh, you know, these are some things that, that we've got to start controlling a, a little bit more of uh, the possession-wise. Those are such key times, end of the second quarter, beginning of the third quarter. Right. Boy, that's a... Key time you know, last, two game. weeks now, uh, teams have been able to come out in that third quarter and take that ball down and score on yeah. us. And uh, you know, we've got to come out and, and, and do some things about that. Any surprises here? Mankato beats South Dakota State. North Dakota State crushes South Dakota. Uh, you know, not really. Uh, for some reason, South Dakota State, I think they're a very good team. Uh, they seem to be struggling a little bit. And Mankato uh, always, I think, has the potential to put some uh, big numbers up. And they're running the ball extremely well. I think they said uh, 220 yards rushing the first quarter wow. uh, in this game. Another uh, kind of a minor upset. I don't know. Everybody thought Morningside uh, might go through the conference schedule, uh, and they run into North Dakota. North Dakota all of a sudden is in the top 20 now. Well, Morningside drops out. But, you know, this, this type of thing. North Dakota is a, a very fine team. Morningside is, and, you know, the score indicates that. And uh, every week you've got to be ready to play. Uh, Northern Colorado also, looking at this game, I mean, they, they were cranked up, uh, ready to play. Uh, they're always tough at home. Uh, and they really took it to St. Cloud uh, physically, which normally doesn't happen. Uh, yeah. St. Cloud's a very physical football team. And the standings reflect uh, this past week's games. North Dakota State, of course, still undefeated, uh, not only in the conference, but uh, in the entire season. North Dakota right up there, 3-0 and with Augustana. Did Augustana 3-0 and team, are they a league championship team you just got done? I think they are, because I, I tell you right now, I, I guess what impressed me about them is you're going to have to go out and beat them. Uh, you know, they don't put the ball on the ground, uh, they don't have turnovers. You know, that's something we're pointing out. We, we haven't had a pass interception the last two games. Uh, and we really haven't given our offense very good uh, field position. I, I think we're playing hard on defense. Uh, we've got to come up with some big plays. You said that the beginning of the third quarter, Coach, is such a crucial time in the, in the football game. Uh, as we take a look at the second uh, second five in the conference. What do you say to, I mean, you really don't know exactly how kids are going to react to halftime speeches, do you? Well, you know, I'm not so sure it's even halftime speeches. I, I think kids got to understand nowadays, and, and obviously, uh, you know, I probably got to do a better job of getting ready to play that, that third quarter. But, you know, I don't know what halftime speeches are going to come out and... Uh, uh, you're going to look at maybe a, a coverage that's not too bad and a 37-yard pass or something like that. Uh, you know, that type of, of, of situation. From it. But I think they've got to be ready to, uh, in, our, in our league, uh, uh, that, that third quarter, that first couple of series are so important. People are going to be coming out hard at you to get something established. And I think from the fact that uh, even though we gave up that score in that third quarter, our offense came back and did some things also uh, from it. We've just got to be able to sustain uh, uh, you know, some of those things. A lot depends on your analysis of the first half, too, as far as coaching goes and the things that might work for you in the second half that, that you want to try to. Right. And, and I think so much of the time is, uh, in our case, maybe it's not so much uh, changing what you do. You've got to keep the intensity and, and the concentration going at, at all the positions. The team had a number of big plays. This year we've seen a lot of big plays turned in by athletes who took an indirect route to UNO. The players of the week this week, Larry Sibley, there was a direct route from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Larry had a great game for you. I tell you, Larry, as I tell people, he, he loves to play football. When he walks between those uh, chalk lines out there, he, he gives it all he's got all the time. And he, he had 13 tackles, one sack for uh, minus nine yards. But you never have to worry about Larry. And, and again, he just truly enjoys playing football. And on offense, your player of the week, once again, had another great game. Right. Leron Henderson, you know, he, I think he's, you know, he's prepared well for the year. Uh, but I also, you know, you got to point out to, to our people up front, I think we point the finger at them a lot of times. Uh, you know, Leron doesn't get these yards uh, unless we're opening some holes. And I think that especially the one long run he had, uh, you know, it was blocked the way you draw it up on the, on the board uh, from it. You know, it seems to me championship years, uh, Leron Henderson would be a senior when you had an experienced huge offensive line and an experienced 
uh, you know, maybe a little uh, more experience at, uh, at quarterback and wide receiver and a little more mobility. And those kinds of things mesh together. I mean, LaRon's a great running back. Maybe you don't have the, the entire team together this year for a championship drive, but you'd sure want him to be there when you had everybody else in place. Right. And, and seasons you don't win, that's what happens. You have a great player in one area and maybe not as much talent elsewhere. Well, you know what's happening is, you know, and, and again, I think you, you talk about your offensive line sometimes, but offensive line is a position where you want people that have been in your program four to five years. And you know, right now, uh, for whatever reasons, I think Scotty Woods has been in our line the longest, and he's a uh, fourth-year player. Everybody else is a, is a first or second year player, or, or a couple of them have been, uh, you know, in our program for maybe three years. So we're really relatively inexperienced. Those those kids that came in with Loran somehow have, have disappeared. Yeah. Uh, you know, from it, and uh, instead of going through uh, uh, four or five years and, and maturing together, uh, he, he's stuck now with uh, some people that are, are learning the system. Yeah. This year we've seen a lot of big plays turned in by athletes who took an under indirect route to UNO. Let's take another look at those plays and meet some Maverick transfers. The day before the game, we practiced on a uh, kickoff return. As soon as I got the ball, I was uh, taking just one step and just follow the blockers. But the coaches, they were telling me to take more than one, just let the defense come to me. And that's what I did during game time. I took three or four steps and all of them came to me and I just reversed it and it was a touchdown. My teammates, they were saying, Vic, you can do it again, you know, me men in zone. After I got the ball, and I didn't see anything but end zone, and all my teammates jumping up and down, and I said, oh, it's, it happened again, and I was just happy. Along with three kicks returned for touchdowns, Victor Barnes has one reception for a TD. I'm a little bit shorter than most of the defensive linemen I was, you know, I go about 60, so I was kind of a thrill to block your field goal. Besides blocking a field goal, Darren Curtis had 30 tackles in four games with one fumble recovery. After letting his first shot at a score get swiped away, Chris Crutchfield has snared three touchdown passes. Mark Priest blocked a punt that gave UNO the winning margin against South Dakota. All of these players have found a place at UNO after starting out at other schools. I think we have terrific transfers. We went out to get transfers to fill an immediate need. Production. We need production out of them, and we're getting that right now. Uh, we're going to recruit in Nebraska and the metro area first, then we'll go to junior colleges after that, if we can't find anybody to fit our need. The intensity level of players are not that great at junior college, junior college level, and here is a big difference. On a junior college level, it's more like a high school thing. More coaches try to motivate you more, and here, you just got to want to do it, I guess. It's more of an X and O's thing here than it is in junior college level. I can't say it was a bad thing going to junior college, but uh, I got some good things from junior college. I wouldn't go and trade in for anything. The players, they're bigger, and the intensity is stronger, and it's more physical. The coaches are different here. They act like they care, you know, not just about football, but they're always with you. I mean, if you're having a family problem or problems in your classes, they'll help. I mean, it's like a family, a home away from home. Uh, junior college, you know, there's probably... Uh, you know, two or three coaches that work with uh, the whole football team. And uh, here, you know, we have, you know, every every position has a coach. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot more modern. You know, the equipment's better. And, and overall, you know, the coaching staff puts a lot more time in with the players. And at UNO, winning's very important to all of us. We, we all take it really seriously. Transferred during uh, my second spring. So I didn't finish school there. I transferred immediately to here. You walk right in, you're into spring practice. And, uh, so I think that gets an advantage of, I had an opportunity to learn the defense, you know, in spring instead of coming in in the fall and being pressured right there. I kind of got woken up last year, and during the very first game, I got hit pretty hard. But what we need is some new practice jerseys, Coach. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm, I'm going to go talk to Carl again. <laughs> Let's talk about this coming week. Uh, 
it's not bad enough that you got to go up to St. Cloud and, and play Noel Martin's team. Uh, always tough up there, but but they get beat this past week, so you know they're going to be angry about that. Uh, St. Cloud isn't having such a great season, though. Well, you know, they, they lost some key people uh, up there, and, uh, you know, you're always uh, looking to replace them. And then the first game of the year, they got some defensive people banged up a little bit, and, you know, now you're bringing in some new faces that, that have to learn the intensity that's involved with, with winning uh, from it. But it is tough playing up there, and, and they will be physical and, and ready to go. Because uh, Northern Colorado really took it to them this last week. We're taking a look at some of the highlights from the St. Cloud State game last year here at UNO. It'll be played uh, in the evening, this coming Saturday, at St. Cloud. Last year, uh, what did they lose from last year to this year, as far as specifically? Do you Harry know? Jackson, their tailback. Oh, yeah, great back. Rusher, uh, ever in North Central Conference, All-American, great athlete. And Stacy Jameson, their, their QB, uh, is a great athlete for him. Uh, quarterback I thought really made the difference uh, they had a receiver named Otto that I thought he played up there six or seven years uh, for him, but he was uh, a, an excellent wide receiver for him they lost some good people there and then uh, in the first game of the year they lost Clarence Williams their inside linebacker to a knee injury and I mean he is a dominant player in North Central Conference. You and two and three at this present time and uh, uh trying to work things together and put some wins together and get some confidence back in the squad. Good luck up at St. Cloud State and, and pick up a victory so we can have a happier show next week. Right, definitely. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Tom, very much. And thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed Maverick Football 1990. We'll see you again next week. Maverick Football 90 is provided in part by Cox Cable Omaha, who, in recognition of the importance of education, is pleased to help support the Knowledge Network of Greater Omaha. Pepperoni's Pizza, serving sandwiches, pizza, pasta, and a fresh salad bar to satisfied customers. Nebraskans for Public Television. And Wimmers of West Point, serving the Midwest since 1934 with quality meat products made right here in Nebraska. Enjoy Cornhusker Junior Varsity Football as the Nebraska freshmen take on the Air Force Academy in videotaped coverage of yesterday's game from the UNL Stadium this morning at 10 on Nebraska Public Television. Maverick Football 90 is provided in part by 